Are there threats? Of course there are threats. There are threats in every single specialty out there. Is AI truly a threat? Um, not as I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm sitting here right at the workstation, looking at the RVUs, looking at the cases, dictating the cases. It is a communication. Uh, essentially what the report is, and you know, I don't really use templates anymore because templates create a lot of mistakes. I've had to go back and edit so many mistakes because I use templates. So I've gotten rid of templates and I look around at other colleagues, especially those that are older and more experienced, they're not using templates. They just dictate what they see into the mic and into the report and then send that relevant information to the clinician. And that's the way to do it. Essentially, each case is a person-to-person -person communication. It's a conversation. I'm creating a conversation based on the images, based on the uh, clinical information, based on the op reports, based on the path reports. I'm creating a communication, a conversation. I'm, I'm saving it, you know, documenting it into the chart, into the electronic medical record, basically forever. And I'm taking some pieces of that and also sending it as a message to directly to the clinician so they can think about it. And as long as our society is interested in person-to-person -person conversations and communications, then radiology will need physicians, human physicians, not AI. And uh, the way I'm looking at it, I just don't see that going away. You know, I think there are some elements, there are some, some very small elements of radiology that have become so robotic that yeah, maybe a computer could do it. Should a computer do it, you know? Um, what comes to mind for me is the, the often ordered uh, non-contrast head CT in the ER setting. Um, there are ERs across the country that are basically evaluating older patients coming from a nursing home. These patients are in their 70s, 80s, 90s. They have a mild trauma because they're older and of course they're not able to manage their bodies as well. So they incur a trauma and we're worried about head, head bleeding or brain bleeding. So a very common study ordered in the ER is a non-contrast head CT. And I would tell you from my experience, the vast, vast majority of these are negative. And I can tell you there are teleradiologists that have made fortunes in the last five, 10, 15 years by sitting at home and taking care of patients, right? Taking care of patients, reading these scans, reading these head CTs, which are 99% negative, And they've been able to read these scans at home document these scans as negative and collect the reimbursement for that. And again, they made fortunes doing this. Could a piece of that be taken by AI? I think it could. Has it happened yet? No, it hasn't happened yet. Is it gonna happen anytime soon? I really don't see it happening anytime soon. I still see that there's a market for teleradiologists who are able to read head CTs, non-contrast CT abdomen pelvises, pelvic ultrasounds, uh, there's a market for those physicians to look at those cases and sort out the ones that are negative and focus on the ones that are positive and do it from home. And there's going to continue to be a market for that. Um, I would say worry less. Be, be less fear-based. Be fearless, right? Remember those t-shirts growing up? No fear. That's what you need if you want to survive in this economy. No fear. Get out there create decent communications, create decent conversations. Take a look at something, whether it's good or bad, make it good, make the other person try to feel good, make, create value, really that's what it is. Work value unit, you know? We're trying to create value and it's a subtle thing. It's not something that I don't think can be understood by a computer at this time. It's a very subtle thing to create that decent value to another human being and that's exactly what I'm trying to do each time I open up a case. That's what I want to do.